Uh, today we will be covering up a very short but a very vital topic. As you can see, uh, bacterial infection of skin. We'll just touch upon the important topics which you need for your course and also for your PG examinations in future. So, bacterial infection of skin is broadly called as pyoderma. Pyoderma meaning any purulent skin disease. By purulent we mean where there is formation of pus. Okay, so pus is vital in any bacterial skin infection and uh, we broadly very broadly classify pyoderma into primary and secondary as you can see primary and secondary primary is mainly due to the infection per se that is the main causative phenomena and secondary where the infection comes into the skin due to some other causes which was already there in the skin so in primary we have superficial and deep Superficial meaning the infection is, you must be aware about the layers of skin. Okay, so if it's in the superficial depth of the skin, it's called superficial. If it's in the deeper depth, it's called deeper pyoderma. So among superficial, just see the classifications carefully. It's very nicely tabled. You will see in superficial there is follicular and non-follicular. By follicle, I mean the hair follicle. Okay, so if the infection is within the hair follicle, it's follicular. If it's adjacent to the hair follicle, it becomes non-follicular. Non okay. So just see the names. These terms might go above your head at the moment. But I promise by the time the class finishes, you will be familiar with these terms. It's very simple. Okay. So in follicular, you can see follicular impetigo, chronic follicularities of leg. In follicular, you see impetigo again. Then in deeper, you see psychosis barbi, paruncles, carbuncles. Ecthyma, cellulitis, erysipelas, these are all big, big terms for now, but you will understand gradually. Secondary, you don't need to do it in this class, but these are the terms you should be familiar with. So, any bacterial skin infection, the most common causative agents are the gram positive bacteria. Are you guys familiar with the gram positive bacteria? You must have had your microbiomes. So, in that, we have the Staph aureus, Streptococcus, Pseudomonas, these are the common ones. So, they are the ones who are usually causing this. So, coming to the first non-follicular uh, superficial bacterial infection, that is impetigo. Impetigo is very simple. It doesn't have any complications. It is usually self-limiting. Even if the doctor is not treating the disease, it will still go away in two weeks. Okay. So, the common thing you need to know here is there are two forms of impetigo. One is the non-bullous, which is much, much more common. And the bullous, which is very uncommon and among the bullous forms mostly it's caused by staph aureus staph aureus is the 70 percent causative agent most 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 common and in the bullous in the non-bullous we have the staph and the strepto now we just see the difference between the two okay so i've just tabled all the differences you can have this ppt i'm sure after the class so don't to write down anything okay? so as you can see non-bullous is very common mostly occurs in children mostly and bullus is only and only in neonates very rarely in children super rarely in adults the bullus form it's usually we see in the nicus and uh, in the clinical presentation <clears throat> in the non bullus form the most important term you need to know is honey colored crust okay this this term should be in your head whenever you hear impetigo honey colored crust should come in your head why? Because it's very classical of impetigo. If you can just see this one again, the second picture of that baby, you can see this honey colored appearance of the skin. These are nothing but dried exudates. These pus, they have dried on top and they look honey colored. Common, you know, common sites, face of course, extremities and in bullus it can be anywhere. Perineum is a very classical place for bullus that is around the anus. And uh, you can see some lymphadenopathy. There is usually no systemic symptom. It's very self-limiting, as I said. And clinical course, as I said, resolved in two weeks without scarring if left untreated. Bullus, I'm not teaching here. Complications, there aren't much. But sometimes it can lead to post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Very rarely. That is usually when the baby is very malnourished or the patient is under some uh, immunodeficiency disorder. That is when it happens. It usually doesn't happen. Treatment, 
if it's localized, just topical antibiotic creams, that is your mupirocin or uh, soframycin or whatever you can give. And obviously, you clean the crust with some washes by disinfectants. If it's a little extensive involvement, that is when we see neonates, then you need to think of systemic antibiotics like amoxicillin, flocloxacillin, and all that. Okay, then next, now we go a little deeper folliculitis. Folliculitis can be superficial as well and can be a little deeper as well. In this, we'll have three terms folliculitis, furuncal, carbuncle. They all will go in synchrony. Okay, so in folliculitis, the inflammation is confined to the ostea. Ostea is what? It's a part of the hair follicle. Guys, please, back. So it's a part of the hair follicle. Hair follicle, do you know the diagram of hair follicle? So it's like a strand coming out like this and a bulb at the bottom. So this is the ostea. So if the infection is within the ostea, it causes folliculitis. Very common in women who do waxing. So when you do waxing, you see these bumps of hair follicle remaining, that is pseudo folliculitis. So they heal without scarring. As dermats, we are very crucial, very notorious for scarring formation. So there is no scar formation, nothing to worry. The infection will resolve. There will be no marks left. Causes, again, Staph aureus, the barb of all the bacteria. Staph aureus is everywhere. And also Staphylococcus, Pseudomonas follicular. These are the common organisms you see everywhere. Sides again, face, trunk, axilla, buttocks, nothing so nothing uh, important about this. Presentation may just see one thing. There are two names I have written. This comes in your neat PG exam. One is Impetigo of Bokhart and the other is Psychosis Barbie. Why? Because superficial folliculitis, as I said in the waxing part, that causes superficial folliculitis. And Psychosis Barbie is deep folliculitis, especially of the beard area. Especially among men who shave, a lot of shaving, that causes infection and then that causes psychosis barbie. Little different between the two. Superficial will be smaller on an arithmetic base, deeper will be larger with a central pustule. They coalesce to form plaques. You guys know the meaning of plaques, pustules, crust. I'm assuming you guys know that already, okay? So that's why I'm just going through this. If you are unfamiliar with the term, tell me, I'll explain. Then uh, superficial will heal without scarring, deep will have tenderness and treatment is again very similar but here I think it's better to go for a systemic antibiotic as well. We can do hexidine washes, topical antibiotics again, for deeper we give beta lactam in, uh, antibiotics. This is how a psychosis barbi looks on the face. This is folliculitis of the face. You can see pus formation. Multiple pus points are the pustules. They have all coalesced to form a plug. <clears throat> Furuncle is deep. It is painful. Uh, you must have heard the Hindi term called Baltor. Yeah, Bengali is called Baltor. Very good. So it's Baltor. So usually the hair is deeply infected, but it is still limited somewhere to the hair follicle. But still surrounding tissue is also infected. Little. If you can, if you have had the baldor in the, I mean, whenever in your life, you will be noticing the swelling and redness around the swelling. So that erythema on the swelling is the, is the uh, surrounding tissue inflammation which is involved. That causes pain. So it is a necrotic infection of, again, caused by staph aureus. Pathology is very simple. Uh, the important thing we need to know here is a furuncle is abscess of the hair follicle, usually of the vellus type. So we have two types of hair in your body right now. Terminal hair and vellus hair. Terminal hair is what we can see from here. All this is terminal hair and the hair we cannot see by the naked eye. We have to see very closely. That is the vellus hair. So furuncle is usually infection of the vellus hair, not of the terminal hair. Okay. Um, so it presents first is a small nodule. Nodule is the deeper papule. And then it becomes pustular and then necrotic and then the surrounding tissue becomes red, erythema. And then there is a healing with a scar formation. Here is important. This will heal with a scar because the infection is deep. So when the infection is deep, there is collagen infection as well. So hence we have a scar formation. A scar can be a pigment here or can be a hole here, anything. And also we might get to see some uh, prodromal symptoms here. 
like fever, body pain, all this can happen. And treatment, you have to go deep. So you have to give an oral antibiotic. And uh, if it's very large and it is very painful, so we first drain and incise the pus. That gives immediate relief from the pain. That can be a possibility here. Carbuncle is nothing but multiple furuncles together. Okay. So if there is one one boil, one balcone is furuncle. But if there are two, three, five, seven furuncles together, they form a carbuncle. So how to define it? It's a group of contiguous hair follicles which is deeply infected, including the subcutaneous fat. So it's very deep. It has gone through the skin and subcutaneous tissue as well. Predominantly in middle old age, obviously, that, that there has to be some compromise of the immunity of the person. So it can be in a diabetic, it can be in a HIV person, it can be in a person with immunosuppressants. People with uh, people here, farmers, they are having multiple trauma in the, on their legs. Cement workers, they are having multiple trauma on their legs. So these people can have carbuncles. There has to be some amount of negligence from your part to land up into carbuncles. Causative organism again, staph aureus, nothing to remember here. Presentation, hard red lump initially, then becomes dome shaped and becomes very tender. So as you just touch it, the patient screams, it's very tender. And in a few days, it will increase in size, sometimes to 10 centimeter as well, depending on the infection. And there's a lot of suppuration. There is a lot of pus oozing out of the carbuncle. Yes, and then obviously this will also heal with a scar, agreed? This has to heal with a the scar, there will be a big hole once this is healed. Common sites are neck, back, shoulders, hips, thighs, etc. Treatment, you have to go for incision drainage. I think it's mandatory here because the patient is in a lot of pain. So just relieve the pain with, uh, with one incision, that's a good idea. And you have to go for systemic antibiotics. The antibiotic group remains the same. Beta lactamase, glucoclosis, all this. Okay, I'm not going to this. Achha, why incision drainage is important here? Because the sooner you drain it, the lesser chances of the scar formation. The more we wait, the more we give the antibiotic, anything. The, the, the slower will be the healing, the slower, the more chance of scar formation. So hence we want to incise and drain it. Then next is ecthyma. Are you all with me right now? Like, the pace is okay or should I slow down? It's fine, no? Okay. Then, uh, so we, have, we are done with the deeper um, folliculitis. Now this is ecthyma. It is also deep. Remember impetigo, honey colored crust. This is impetigo in a deeper variant. Okay, this is also non-follicular. We are not involving follicular anymore. Follicular is done. Folliculitis, furuncle, carbuncle, that is done. Now it's non-follicular. In non-follicular, we have ecthyma, which is a deeper impetigo. In impetigo, we had honey colored crust. You guys like honey? Then you like this more because this is chocolate colored crust. Okay. So this will be a little darker because uh, obviously it's a little deeper, that is why. So if you want to define it, it is a pyogenic infection characterized by formation of adherent crust. Adherent, why? Because it's deep, so the crust becomes, it, it sticks with the base. So if you remove the crust, you will see an ulcer. It is that deep. Causes, huh, here causes become slightly different because streptococcus pyogens is more common than staph aureus here. Okay, everything else so, now, so far about staph aureus, staph aureus, staph aureus, and some amount of pseudomonas, some amount of streptococcus, but here streptococcus pyogenes is first, and then staph aureus and pseudomonas aeruginosa. You have to have predisposing features, like in carbuncle, the patient had to be poor hygienic conditions or multiple trauma. Here also, you have to have some negligence. There is malnutrition, repeated trauma, poor hygiene. Most common in the lower extremities because it's the most prone area for trauma as well as negligence because usually usually people don't care much about their legs usually because it's not so visible unless it starts paining a lot and this doesn't pain that much so presentation please mark this it's important uh, manifest as thick chocolate colored crust with intuited base and surrounding ecthyma sorry erythema okay
and the crust is adherent. Every word is important here. I've tried to make it as concise as possible here. The crust is adherent and the removal reveal, uh, reveals a shallow ulcer and often heals with scarring. Often, not always, but there is a very great chance of scarring. Depression, forget it. Investigations. Investigation, you can do microbiological swabs to have the culture sensitivity with you, but always start them on some empirical therapy and uh, that's it, nothing much. This is how an ecthyma looks like. You can see on the right, the thick chocolate colored crust and here also you can see this is more of dark chocolate, this is more of dairy milk. Okay, then we come to cellulitis. Cellulitis you must have heard. You guys must have heard of cellulitis. Patients coming in the emergency department with a swelling of one leg, with a lot of pain, unable to walk, usually it's a dida for some reason. Anyway, so acute infection of the skin involving deep dermis, suppressed tissue, staph aureus, streptococcus. Children is not so common. And you'll have signs of inflammation, the, the, the rubber, pallor and dalot. You'll have that. And this is very important, the borders are ill-defined. So patient coming with redness of the leg, swelling, it can be either cellulitis or it can be other thing called erysipelas. So the only thing you can differentiate between the two is the borders. Borders are not well defined here. You cannot appreciate the borders demarcation properly. You see a picture here, the leg. It is red, but there is no border, right? I'll show you the border properly next time. I mean, in the next slide. So there is erythema, there is thickness, there is induration, there is a lot of pus, there is a lot of tenderness. You will just touch the patient, it's tender. You, you palpate the heat, it's very hot, the leg is very hot. So you get all this size of inflammation on the leg. And the pores, though we don't get to see it, initially it's a papule, become vesicle, become bulla, and there is rupture, then form the pus, necrotic tissue, or something like that. And also we can get to see some amount of lymphadenitis as we palpate up. So suppose it's a leg, we palpate the inguinal lymph nodes, we might get the lymph nodes there as well. That's a complication we don't want. So among the complications, global nephritis number one, then uh, lymphadenitis, bacterial endocarditis, and lymphatic drainage obstruction can be there. Treatment, 10 day course is not enough. We have to go for at least 14 to 15 days of uh, antibiotics. Usually we go for an IV antibiotic setup for the first five to seven days, patient improves, back home, four, 14 days more. As you can see, MRSC, that is medicine resistant staph aureus. We give TMP, SMA, that is trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, and doxycycline. And also, uh, adjuvant measures, that is immobilization and elevation of the leg. This is usually not possible at home. Hence, we admit the patient. We keep the patient for five days in the hospital, and we make it immobilize and elevate the legs, and wet drainage to the areas. All this nursing care is important here. And we ask the patient not to walk around. So, didas will never listen. So you have to admit them and then you keep them like this for five days. Okay, this is how it looks. You can see extensive soft tissue involvement. It's very painful. Okay, it's very, very painful. Lot of edema. You can see some bullae. Hmm, yeah, you can see these, these are the water colored, uh, water filled uh, lesions, big ones. This is what we call bullae. Here you can see, like a marginal scale, can you appreciate? Hmm? Periphery scaling, can you appreciate? This looks like fungal infection from the, from the top. fungal hai, dad motun actor jinishache. Patients are treated for dad in their uh, whack world. They are treated for fungal infection and they land up in cellulitis because it's not dad. So what happens, this bulla, when this ruptures, it leaves a peripheral margin like this. This was initially a bulla. It has ruptured and it has left peripheral, what we call as collarate of scales. It has left these scales in the margin. This looks like fungal, I agree. But if you take the history properly, there is tenderness, there is inflammation, edema, it's not fungal at all. Okay? No. Yeah, there will be itching. Here is no itching. No? I'm just saying it looks like fungal. 
So the quacks, um, I said quacks, dermats don't do this mistake usually, but they quacks the series and they give fungal disease. And of course, their favorite steroid. Okay, the next is erysipelas. The second name is kind of important. The examiners love it. St. Anthony's fire. This was some historical event, pretty mythological, I think. Uh, there was a church, people set on fire, it was, there was red, red, red everywhere. So it's called, because the lesion is very red color, you can see it's this red. So it looks like that fire. Okay. And why I wanted to point out about the cellulitis margins is because in erysipelas, if it occurs on the leg, it looks like cellulitis, but the margins are very well defined. Margins are very well defined. If you can see, see the margins here, see the margin here, it's very well defined. And here there is no well defined margin, it's all red, flushed. Okay, that is one very important factor. Because erysipelas is also present with pain, tenderness, edematous, red, hot. There will be prodromal symptoms as well. Anyway, so the cause is not staph here. The cause is group A streptococcus. Now we are changing the cause. Gradually we will change the cause. Usually on the face and lower extremity, but sometimes also on the axilla and the trunk. And uh, well demarcated, hot, tense, indurated, fitting edema, painful on palpation, may burn, sorry. For? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes. You know about it. Ah, yes. It's also called for that. In derma, it's for this. Okay. And uh, there will be lymphadenopathy as well. And this will also resolve with some amount of uh, pigmentation as we can see. See, it's so well demarcated. Okay, this is a deadly disease. It's called uh, Staphylococcal Scalded Skin Syndrome. SSSS, 4S. Okay, it's also called Ritter's disease. Ritter's disease, you may not need to know. So this is an exfoliative dermatosis. Here we will not see pus formation. Here we will not see edema and all that. We will see off. The upper layer of skin literally stripping off. So this happens due to a toxin from the strap Staph aureus. I'll just come come to this later. So this is an exfoliated dermatosis in which most of the body surface becomes tender, erythematous, common in young children and infants. It is not so common in adults. And this happens. The cause is important. It is caused by exfoliating epidermolytic toxins from the Staph aureus. So Staph aureus sometimes they release toxins. These are epidermolytic in nature. They break down the epidermis, the keratins. So once that's broken down, the skin cup comes out as sheaths like this. You can see in this picture, skin coming off like sheaths. Okay, so this can be fully widespread. It can occur on the entire body. So initially, it's, it's a localized staph infection, and then it becomes that is fever, there is irritability, tenderness, and then becomes a widespread erythematous eruption. Okay, usually in the flexors. The tender skin becomes gathered into folds and shrinks and leaves raw areas. What are raw areas? These are the raw areas, this red, this one. So once the skin is peeled off, this area is not so matured skin. So that is a painful area. And since it occurs in babies, the baby will never tell the history. It's the mother which will tell. So you have to diagnose it with the help of the skin. The good thing is it has good prognosis. Because once we treat the infection, it's gone. Okay. And this heals within two weeks without scarring. There's no scar formation also. So it's like a mini exfoliation treatment the baby gets. The skin is off, another new skin comes. Treatment, you have to hospitalize the patient, of course. Parental antibiotics, you have to hospitalize. And that's it. Vancomycin, tocomycin is not usually needed. Just a little bit of toxicity is fine. This is another deadly disease, can occur in adults. Toxic shock syndrome, it is 7 to 8% fatal. But usually now we are seeing good prognosis. It is also again infection with multi-organ failure. That is the main thing here. We have to look for multi-organ failure 
at least three systems have to be compromised, three body systems apart from skin. So it can be either uh, it can be either uh, gastrointestinal or renal or uh, musculoskeletal or mucous membrane or CNS. Any of the three has to be compromised. So it's a life-threatening disease. Of course, there is fever, erythema, disformation, circulatory shock, multi-stem disease. So think of systemic, more systemic, less cutaneous. That is toxic shock syndrome. And uh, it is rare though, it is seen mostly in the tampon users. For, for women who are menstruating, the use of tampons, that is the most common predisposing factor here. But still it's not very common in tampon users also. Too much to read. Uh, just focus on this one. Multi-organ failure sets afterwards. Uh, three systems need to be involved. GI, renal, hepatic, ACNS, among, among these, three have to be at least involved. The patient present with rash, that is rash, that is edema, that is tenderness. And within three days, this rash clears and the systemic symptoms remain. So this is, the management is more by the medical team rather than the dermatological team. Okay. So this is how we, it ends up in. But by the time the patient is on this, the patient is in ICU or HDU and getting managed for the systemic uh, management. See the mortality rate is about 7%. Okay. So treatment, first time we resuscitate the patient, IV fluids, blood if needed, IV clindamycin, vancomycin, second line immunoglobulin sometime in the but not necessary. This is a more surgical disease rather than medical. So, because here we need to have surgical debridement of the area. So, this is a deeper infection. This goes beneath the subcutaneous tissue, must sometimes involved in the muscle fascia as well. Hence the name, necrotic fasciitis. So, there is rapidly progressive necrosis of subcutaneous fat and fascia. Can be life-threatening. There are four subtypes causing by the different organisms. It can be microbial, it can be gram-negative marine organisms, it can be fungus. It can be anything. Any infection going deep can lead to this. Site is often trunk and extremities. There's tenderness and tenderness is everywhere in this. There's not much to say. This one you can see. Skin changes from red to purple to gray. Ill-defined patches, virus discoloration, hemolytic bulla may develop. Necrosis occurs obviously. So treatment here is extensive surgical debridement with antimicrobial therapy. So what we see here, there is woody palpation. The skin is woody. So we have a picture here. You see tense woody edema here with purple gray areas of necrosis and bullae with watery discharge. Huh. Ah, this is for nearest gangrene. Correct. So if this necrotic pressure occurs, occurs in the genital area, it's called fornius gangrene, as your friend rightly pointed out here. So the thing, the thing to look at here is, the change in the skin is not corresponding with the symptoms. The change is not too much, but the pain is a lot. You don't have to palpate the patient to elicit tenderness. The patient is already in pain, a lot of pain. So the amount of skin change is not in, in, in synchrony with the symptoms. That's because it's more internal. The skin upper layer is normal sometimes. Like in phony, as you can see, there's just erythematous, that's it. But the pain is a lot. Sorry? Kya sa crackle? Nahi. Crepitus? Nahi, isme nahi. Isme, there is no crepitus. There is a lot of pain. Crepitus to bone mein jayega. Deep me again, muscle. It is in the facial layer. Muscle fascia. It's, it's, it's necrosed. The fascia is necrosed. There is no room for crepitus here. Okay, then uh, erythrasma. These are very small, small topics. Just know from the top. Erythrasma is the causative organism very important here. It is not by anything like staph or or anything. So here we see. Infection in the skin folds. Skin folds, I mean axilla, 
interdigital folds, interdigital area, groins, intergluteal folds, inframammary region, umbilicus, etc. The lesions appear pink to red, covered with fine scales, have wrinkling, and the color fades to brown. Okay. The diagnosis is very important here. We do a Wood's lamp. You guys know what's a Wood's lamp? Wood's lamp is a device which emits light. It's a blue colored light. No, it, it is a special filter. It uses mercury and silver. So with that filter, we get to see this. On the right, you can see this one. This is the fluorescence we get to see. We call this the coral red fluorescence. Okay. So this is how it looks normally. It has a brown patch in the folds, groins, axilla. And when you do wood lamp, it appears coral red. Okay, treatment is very similar, but uh, here we give more topical and less systemic. Tridnamycin, mepirosin, fusric acid, azole, antifungus. Antifungus we don't give. Systemic we give oral etromatic cycle, etc. And this is how it looks. This is erythrasma. This is a different variant of erythrasma. Wood slam. Wood slam. Simple bedside test, wood slam. Still, it still sometimes it's not visible because this is a very classical variant. It's called the uh, disiform variant. Okay, this is a different variant altogether. It's a different shell. Sometimes we even do a biopsy to confirm. Then this we get to see in the OPD. Pitted keratolysis. The causative mechanism is very classical here. Chytococcus sedentarius. It's not stab, it's not step to anymore. This is chytococcus sedentarius. Why? Because it usually occurs in people who have a lot of sweating in their soles. This, this occurs in the soles of the foot. You will see a lot of holes and craters like this. Deco. You get to see all these holes and craters on the soles. See here. See here. It's because this bacteria loves keratin. It feeds on keratin. So wherever there is a lot of uh, sweating, this kind of grows there. And then it eats on the it degrades the keratin in stratum cornea because it contains compounds like these which leads to malodor presentation you will see these depressions which i showed and uh, there is no erythema and nothing like that but there is a lot of hyperhidrosis and malodor that is a lot of sweating which i will say boss sweating ho raha hai and it smells and there is this craters so treatment you have to reduce the sweating first thing Reduce the sweating. If the patient is someone who is wearing shoes all the time, ask him or her if he or she can wear sandals first. And also give treatment to reduce the sweating. For producing sweat, uh, sweating, we use this compound, aluminum for 20% or we inject botulinum toxin which we call as Botox. That also gives great results for uh, excessive sweating. And treatment for other infection, you just give topical therapy. You don't need to give systemic, it's a very superficial thing. Just give topical antibiotics. Okay, simple. This is a picture question. This comes in the exam as picture questions. Last, trichomycosis, actually pubis and capitis. It can be either of it. So, trichomycosis, it's actually some misnomer. We use the word trichomycosis to confuse you guys. Mycosis is usually fungal. And, but this is a total bacterial infection. I don't know why these people, they love confusing us. So, trico meaning hair. Mycosis meaning fungal, but here it's bacterial. So if it's in the axilla hair, it's axillaris. If it's in the pubic hair, it's pubis. If it's in the scalp hair, it's capitis. Okay. So it is a superficial coriny bacterium infection. Results in concretions on the shafts of axilla, on the hair basically. Concretions meaning there are these uh, adhesions. Okay. And uh, presentation is again concretions on the shafts of hair. They develop yellow black nodules these sheets are there cylindrical sheets are there which can be seen with naked eye that is characteristic odor and sweat this is how it looks like this is axilla so these hair strands they they have this coating on top like a yellowish coating it, the treatment is so simple just shave the hair you just shave the hair it's gone because the infection is confined to the hair shaft it's not going inside, it's just adherent to the hair shaft. So treatment shaving the hair, cleansers, antibiotic, this is not required. And that's all, very simple. Any questions?
apart from you? Any questions, guys? We have 10 minutes. So now if you see this table, the first table I showed, now this makes more sense. Now you are, I think, a little familiar with this, at, at least this table, just this table, okay? Just remember one thing, the causative agent, it is the same for everything except for the last ones, which were fetal keratolysis, erythrasma, uh, uh, Stephanos called skin syndrome, toxic shock syndrome, rest is same, treatment is also same. Treatment is just described like the same treatment for everything. General measures, uh, wash, antibiotic wash, cleaning, hygiene, uh, topical therapy, systemic therapy. Divide your treatment like this. But just in the last two, sweating kill you, you have to give aluminum chloride or botulinum toxin. That's it.